Engineering students at Hopkinton High School worked hard the last few weeks designing useful contraptions or devices for the Hopkinton Police and Fire Departments. First, the students met with both of the departments to discuss some of the needs of the department, and then they spent weeks designing to help with those needs. The Hopkinton Fire and Police Department then visited the class to take a look at the contraptions and determine the winner of the student showcase. HCAM News was on the scene to talk with some of the participants. We have the hydro shaft. It's a water bottle and it was um, the problem that a lot of officers brought up to us was that uh, they had nowhere to carry water with them when they were going on patrol and um, it wouldn't always be the first thing on their mind because they were busy with all their like really important equipment. So um, and also their vest and their belt were already super super heavy. So this was uh, designed to be really light and um, not to be worn on the belt. It can be like the upper or lower leg depending on what you want. So we got an adjustable strap to fit any leg. We also have a strap down here to make sure the bottle fits comfortably. And it's also a very light design. And it's designed to be worn for like directing traffic or when you're standing around a lot, not necessarily running, but it could be used for running and it won't bounce around or it'll, and it'll stay pretty secure. Well, how long uh, did you work on this for? Um, a few weeks. Yeah, a few weeks. So, this is our product. It's the uh, hydro attachment, right? So, you know, police, they're on the run, right? They don't really have time to just be carrying a water bottle with them, especially since they need to have both their hands ready so they can potentially hold a flashlight, hold a weapon, maybe, you know, hold a walkie-talkie, whatever. So the point of this design is to be more hands-free. It just attaches to, you know, the back or attaches to one of the many straps in the front. And the straw rests near your face. You know, best case scenario, you can keep it, you know, it's kind of on your lip and be able to drink from it without having to use any sort of, you know, hands or at all. But, you know, worst case scenario, it's a very short, you know, a little grab to bring it over to your face. And it's also form-fitted, so it slides in and out easily, it fits really well, and since it has the wooden casing, it's also really quiet when you're on the run, maybe chasing after somebody. You know, because you can't have a lot of noise being made. And also, it, it's able to stay upside down even when it's full, the cap doesn't leak, and it's pretty versatile in how it can be, you know, used and attached. Terrific. And how long did you work on that for? Uh, we worked on it for, you know, mo most of the duration of the project. A lot of the time we had to do trial and error to figure out how to attach, or like, figure out the attachments for these and the lengths to get it connected properly. But we did end up actually getting a very good design here. Uh, we did we have a logo on it and it you know attaches pretty well this is a leg strap uh, designed to take the weight off of a police officer's vest uh, and put it on their legs to reduce their lower back pain. Uh, you can strap on your leg, it has a D-ring system, just like a football belt. Um, and there's this little piece right here, which will fit right in here. Uh, and make a secure kind of uh, attachment. This piece can hold a baton, but given time and resources, we could make uh, any number of these pieces to hold any uh, police officer's equipment, uh, like a flashlight, a pepper spray, and anything. Thank you. Uh, we've been working on this for like two weeks, three weeks maybe. So our problem was 
when police take the probe off their taser, it's hard to use because they have two hands full and they need another hand to do something else like using a baton or so. And to solve that, we made this, which is a clip and it attaches on to the probe. So when you take it off, it like stays on. And with your other hand, you can do other stuff. Um, yeah, we made this out of 3D print plastic and we made a spring to attach it to the taser so it's flexible. Terrific. And how long did it take you? We took a couple of tries on this because we kept getting the measurements wrong. So, I don't like... Wait, two weeks. Yeah. So the problem we're trying to solve is batons falling off of the police officer's body while they're doing their duties or the like perpetrators being able to take the baton from a police officer and use it against them. So this is our solution, it's called the Baton Twister. It slips onto the belt of a police officer and with this box that would usually be made out of leather. And then with the actual product, it twists into this holder and then it can just be removed for the police officer to use. But it, with the way it twists, it makes it more difficult for a perpetrator to be able to take it from them. And it, with the holder, it just makes it so it won't fall off of the person's body. This is the taser blazer, and um, we focused on the taser's prongs, really. Um, we want to improve the penetration and the dur durability of the prongs. So, as you can see here, we made a 3D model on CAD. It's a software. And um, we went through a whole engineering process. So we first wanted to make a replica of the taser and use a firing model, but that was unethical. So then we made a prongs out of metal, but it's too sharp. And now we're making a lethal weapon and we don't want to make it a lethal weapon, so we make a non-lethal weapon. And so we, and instead we did it online on CAD, uh, which is a 3D software. And um, yeah, so it really, you know, we use titanium instead of, uh, we use tungsten instead of uh, titanium, since tungsten is more hard and it's more uh, conductive. So it will be more efficient uh, for uh, each firing session. And what we did differently on the CAD model was instead of using having one barb like on the model we made, um, we made it less lethal by adding more barbs but making it less sharp so that way it can just latch onto heavy clothing and it won't tear anyone because a uh, taser is supposed to be a weapon that cops like res uh, resort to when they're trying not to like cause any harm to their victims. Yeah. Nice Thank you. Work. Uh, did you have to do experiments to well, figure out the best materials? Yes. Well, actually, we want to do experiments, but like we said, it's really dangerous, right? We, we can't really shoot this across the classroom. Um, so uh, we want to do experiments, but we want to print this out, actually, 3D print this, but it was too small, so we really couldn't. Uh, and we just have our, you know, sub prototype right here. So, um, yeah. Uh, this is a radio so the radio can tend to fall off from the officer so if the officer is in a dangerous situation the radio can fall off so some situations when the officer may need a radio is uh, if there's a robbery in progress or if the car is stolen so if an officer might need a radio to contact other police officers this radio is very adjustable so you can put it on any body part for example you can put it on your arm so from your arm it's very easy to talk on the radio and this radio is not limited to just radios you can uh, also put smartphones on this holder. So yeah. Alright, so it's a uh, it's an L shape. So there's elastic bands to just grab onto the radio as shown here. And Velcro to just attach to the officer. So it's pretty um, flexible and it doesn't really need any uh, time to set up. Alright, so it looks like uh, a lot of hard work went into these cool inventions. So what are you thinking about? I think they're awesome. It's, it's very evident very that a lot of hard work went into this. It's pretty impressive to see what, uh, you know, that our local kids are capable of. And could you picture yourselves using any of this stuff? Absolutely. A lot of them. Yeah. A lot of them are really good ideas. Yeah, there's a big theme on hydration today. That would go a long way towards uh, long long shift work. Um, it's, it's pretty heartwarming to see the kind of stuff that they uh, were able to come up with. You can get a further look at the great engineering and robotic work at Hopkinton High School by following teacher Doug Scott at Mr. Scott Bot 
on Twitter.